Bibles tonight to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 8, and verse 2. I'll make reference to the last chapter of Matthew, the last chapter of Mark, the last chapter of John. We will primarily, 90%, be in the Gospels, because the person we're sharing tonight is only found in the Gospels. You know, at at the events of Jesus, His death, burial, and resurrection, there, you know, there was Mary, the mother of Jesus there, and, and there was another Mary around, right? Someone want to help me out with that other Mary? Mary Magdalene, that's it, and that's who we're, we're just going to simply go through her life tonight, and you know, I've, I've never heard anyone talk about Mary Magdalene, I've preached a sermon on Mary, the, the mother of Jesus, she was given a privileged opportunity to, to carry our Lord, part of a miraculous birth of the Holy Spirit to bring our Lord about, but but Mary Magdalene, do we even have enough to share a message tonight? Well, we're going to talk about her, and and when I say Mary, don't let your minds go where where I feel like mine could and ours could on Mary, the mother of Jesus. When I if I don't say Mary Magdalene every time, know that it's Mary Magdalene that we are focusing on. She is the Bible character for tonight. We're sharing Bible characters on Wednesday night, and Easter is Sunday. So there's kind of a combining of the two. But Mary Magdalene is mentioned 14 times in the Gospels. And over half of those times, eight of those times, she is mentioned with a group of women. And just about every time, you will find her mentioned first. And there's significance to that in the Bible. There is order of things in the Bible, and it's for certain reason. And we're going to see that this was an outstanding, thankful, faithful servant of the Lord tonight. Five times Mary Magdalene is mentioned alone, her name, in connection with the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Mary Magdalene's in an elite group, and we'd be hard-pressed to find too many greater in devotion to their Lord than Mary was. But let's look, she not only had great devotion, let's look at Luke chapter 8 here, and verse 2, and let's look at her great deliverance. I'll just start in verse 1. It says, and it came to pass afterward that he went through every city and village preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him. And certain women which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, out of whom went seven devils. She was delivered from seven demons. There's one devil, but he has a lot of demons. And she was delivered from seven demons. She was completely, you know, that number is the number for for completeness. And, And, you know, she was completely dominated there. She had a very torturous past, as we might consider what she was dealing with as she's described here. But she found salvation in the Lord Jesus Christ. She was healed of demonic possession. Her mental faculties were restored to her. I do not connect her to a woman from Luke chapter 7 as some do to say something about her morals. No one can prove to me 
that, that the woman spoken about in chapter 7 is the same as Mary Magdalene here in 8. And so, and so as we look at her though here, she was restored. And we don't know the reason why she was possessed of these seven devils. We don't know what kind of weakness there was in her life or why this happened. But we do know that these demons met their match. They met her master, the Lord Jesus Christ, who came to destroy the works of the devil. And that was a work of the devil, and he destroyed it. And her troubled mind became peaceful when he commanded the devils to come out and to stay out. And she witnessed and experienced in her own life a miracle from God. Salvation not only took away her sins, but in her special case, it brought sanity to her. And and salvation is about the forgiveness of our sins. And, and the Lord does many things in our lives after salvation. She immediately had sanity. She was clothed in a robe of righteousness and a right mind. And for that, there is a great quality that we find in Mary Magdalene. And that is that she was thankful. After her great deliverance, she became a great disciple of the Lord. She lived for the cause of Christ and she contributed to His ministry and the needs that he and the disciples had in his earthly ministry. Look at verse 3. At the end of 2, we identified Mary called Magdalene, and, and there are other women listed here, and it says that they all ministered unto him of their substance. So what these women had, they gave, to the ministry of Jesus and His disciples. You know, there was expense there. You don't find where, where Jesus has taken up an offering, yet He had expenses. You know, you think about whenever uh, Jesus went to the woman at the well. I mean, the disciples, they went into town to get some meat. They went to go get something to eat. I wonder where that money came from while, while they were on their missionary journey and they were sharing the gospel and they had to eat food. So they had needs and these women, including Mary Magdalene, were, were contributors, contributors to their needs. She gave of her substance as Jesus went from place to place preaching and teaching. She left her home in Magdala to follow the Lord. You know, there are many who have benefited from the Lord Jesus Christ, but not every one of them is grateful. Not every one of them have gratitude for the Lord. But Mary Magdalene is among a few that was a great example of her thankfulness and her gratitude to the Lord. You know, it might be the same ratio today as we think about the lepers. Jesus had one leper come to him and thank him for healing, but he had healed ten lepers. One of them turned back with gratitude to the Lord for what He had done. Mary's personal presence with Jesus in His ministry and what she contributed to His ministry, not only by her presence, but whatever was in her pocket, she gave to it. They were, and these were expressions of her thankfulness to Him. She loved her Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And she supported Him. And she served Him. She had a grateful heart. And she just didn't say, Oh yeah, I'm thankful to the Lord. She showed by her life that she was thankful to the Lord Jesus Christ. She was not only thankful, but it kind of overlaps into her being faithful. Mary Magdalene was faithful. And this is what we're going to focus on for several more minutes as we share tonight, 
She followed her Lord through the sunshine and the shadows, if you will. I mean, through his preaching from city to city, and then his last trip he made from Galilee to Jerusalem. She continually ministered unto Jesus, and, and she was present at the trial of Jesus. You know, everything was unlawful and wrong about this. And who, who wants to see that? Who could bear that? You know what? She was there. Mary was there. She followed her Lord, and she went with Him to the trial that He had. His trial of mockery, if you will. She attended to His needs while the crowd was in awe, while he was preaching and doing the things that he did, and he had those following him, a crowd after him. She met his need there when there were those following him that hung on his every word. And she was there when he was arrested and placed on trial unjustly for his life. Some friends of Jesus deserted him. There are many who deserted Jesus at that time that he went on trial and he went before Pilate, but not faithful Mary. Mary was there. She was there when he went on trial. She was there when Jesus was pronounced to death. Who wants to bear and to hear those words? Well, Mary was present. When the blood of Jesus was called for by wicked men, Mary was present and she heard it. She heard the religious leaders call for His crucifixion. She heard that. Pilate pronounced the Savior's death and Mary listened in on that. She was there while all of this came against her Lord and Savior, who was so precious to her. He was beaten, and Mary witnessed it. When Jesus was spit upon, it, it was witnessed by Mary. When He was slapped, when He was mocked, when He was violently treated, Mary saw it. And Mary saw them lead Him to Golgotha. There's a victory that happened at Golgotha, so we call it, call it Calvary, but it was the place of the skull that Jesus was being escorted to, to His death, and she saw Him heading toward that cross that He was going to be nailed to. She sorrowed. You can imagine her in shock as she saw the suffering of her Savior, but she stood as near as she could in an attempt to provide even the smallest amount of comfort, even by her presence. In Luke 23, 49, it includes her in a group that followed him, and it says that they stood afar off, but she was as near as she could possibly be to comfort him. She heard the bitter cries of Jesus when He went to that hill of Golgotha. She heard it with a breaking heart. She was there when the spear was thrust in His side and the blood and the water flowed and Jesus was clearly pronounced dead and declared to have experienced death. You know, there's a song that says, were you there when they crucified my Lord? Mary Magdalene, this woman of God, this woman who was radically changed by the Lord, become a new creature in Christ, she was faithful. She was there through His crucifixion. She could say that she was there. And not only for that, but after Jesus died, there His body is hanging there, and she wants to be part of the burial. She still wants to serve her Lord in life and in death. And, and she wants to contribute to the burial. She can't get him down off of the cross. But along comes Joseph of Arimathea. And, and along comes Nicodemus as well. And the body of Jesus was taken, this battered body, to the point 
that he was unrecognizable. His body was taken down and he was taken to a borrowed tomb. And he was laid in the tomb. And guess who was there whenever he was laid in the tomb? Mary Magdalene was there when the body of Jesus was carried to that borrowed tomb. Matthew 27 and 61 says, And there was Mary Magdalene and the other Mary sitting over against the sepulcher. There Mary, there Mary Magdalene was sitting against the tomb when the body of Jesus was taken there. She was taken there and he was taken there and she was there until he was laid in the tomb. Mark chapter 15 and verse 47. Most of these references are at the end of the Gospels different Gospels. And so that verse, Mark 15, 47, says, She beheld where he was laid. She was there when Jesus was buried. She not only beheld his body as it was laid in the tomb, Luke 23, 55 says, but she was the first one there to see an empty tomb. You know, it, it wasn't all over after he, was, he died and was buried. She was there at the tomb and she saw when he filled it and she saw it emptied. John chapter 20, the end of the gospel of John, it says in verse 1, the first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early when it was yet dark unto the sepulcher, and seeth the stone taken away from the sepulcher. She, Mary, was the first person in this greatest event of all time to see the empty tomb. She witnessed the most important event that this world has ever known. And... It's not only the greatest thing in history that ever happened in the world, it's the greatest hope that this world can have. The empty tomb of Jesus. And she sees it first, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Mary Magdalene was faithful, and God loves faithfulness. God blessed her faithfulness. What an honor this was for Mary that she got to see the tomb empty first on that early Easter morning. She looked in and she saw that he wasn't there. The angel's presence were there. She trembled, Mark 16 says. She was amazed. Mark 16 says, she wept, and John 20 says, she then rushed to Peter and made the announcement. They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulcher, and we know not where they have laid him. She took that message, and Peter and John, the disciple whom Jesus loved, they came to see the Bible says John outran Peter, and he got there quicker. And they both came to see if what she said was true. And the Bible says that they saw it was true. And the Bible says in John chapter 20 and verse 10, Then the disciples went away unto their own home. Now, I'm not saying that that is something disrespectful or anything like that, but I just want you to notice in John 20, 10, the disciples went to their own home. And let's consider John chapter 20 and verse 11. And it says, But Mary stood without at the sepulcher weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulcher. The disciples went home and Mary Magdalene stayed at the tomb. She stayed there weeping. Two angels appear to Mary in the way as she's weeping. 
And she says she is weeping because they have taken away my Lord. I love to hear that. Some people take it funny when I, when I talk about Jesus and I talk about my Jesus. And, and people say, well, he's my Jesus too. And I'm like, good, that's exactly what I wanted to get out of you. But he's, he's my personal Lord, and he's your personal Lord. And it's good to say, my Jesus. He is your Jesus, and he's my Jesus. And Mary here says, my Lord, her very own Lord. She knew that salvation is personal, that it is something that he did for her. Jesus died for her. And she knew that. She knew her Lord in a saving relationship. What she didn't know, though, as she wept and shared with the angels, was that Jesus was behind her. And when he first speaks to her, she doesn't recognize who it is. But when Jesus says her name, and he calls her name Mary... She turns and she immediately knows that it's her Lord and Savior when she hears her name. Aren't you glad to know that the Lord knows your name, that he knows you personally, that that we are his sheep and he is the shepherd of the flock and he cares about us individually. Mary turned around and she said, and she said, Rabboni, which means master. And Mary turned around and gave such a response that the only one that could be a blend of the highest reverence for her Lord and the greatest love for her Lord that she could speak in a name to him. And he says in John 20 and verse 17, Jesus saith unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father, but go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my Father and your Father and to my God and your God. You know she wanted to kiss his feet. You know that she wanted to do that, but he says that for one reason, for the elevation of, of her relationship with him. It's spiritual communion that they are experiencing, and he's teaching her that. It's not about earthly affection now, but it's about heavenly love. And then we see that she was the first, Mary Magdalene was the first one appointed to take a message after Jesus was resurrected. She was the first one to deliver a message from the command of Jesus. Again, in John chapter 20 and verse 17, at the, at the end of the verse, Jesus say, verse 16, Jesus saith unto her, Mary, she turned herself and said unto her, Rabboni, which is to say, Master, Jesus saith unto her, Touch me not, for I'm not yet ascended to my Father. And here's the, the command for the message, right in the middle of verse 17. But go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my Father and your Father and to my God and your God. Jesus gave the first message after he was resurrected to Mary Magdalene. And she obeyed and she went. What does it say she did? It says there in John chapter 20, Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord. I just wonder how fast she got there. I mean, what an exciting privilege. What an honor it was for Mary. She stayed near Christ in his ministry, in his crucifixion, and in his death. And I I tell you tonight that I've I've never talked about her much. I've definitely never brought a whole message on her. 
But Mary Magdalene was faithful. She was a faithful child of God. What an example she is. She came to a special knowledge first. The tomb was empty. She saw her resurrected Lord. She went with the message that was given to her. She was given honor and had a special place with her Lord after His resurrection. She was the first to see Him risen. She was the first to receive a message. You know, blessed things happen when we follow Jesus. We don't know what's coming. We don't see what's going to happen. But be sure of this. A blessing is coming when we follow Jesus. It might be in the midst of burdens. And the burdens may not uh, stop coming. But the blessings of Jesus will always outweigh the burdens. There may be burdens for following Him. There, there may be persecution for following Him. But the blessings far outweigh it. And she was blessed and she was close to Jesus. But it didn't end there. Still, after that, after His resurrection, and after she went and told the disciples, in Acts chapter 1 and verse 14, it tells us that the women with the mother of Jesus assembled with the apostles in the upper chamber for prayer and supplication. It is safe to say that Mary Magdalene was one of those women who was with them for prayer and supplication in the upper room. Mary Magdalene was there also, you have to know, awaiting the coming of the Holy Spirit who was promised on that day of Pentecost. And Mary Magdalene was faithful through ministry. And this woman met the needs of Jesus, okay? Just consider what she did. She was faithful through the misery of the pronouncing of His death. She followed as He was led to Golgotha. She saw the beatings that came upon Jesus. She heard His cries. She saw His lifeless body laid in the tomb. She saw the tomb without a body. She saw it empty. She spoke first with our resurrected Lord. Just, just two more little things, and we've, we've got to get it out of here and give it to, to the Awana program. But just two more little takeaways as we close. Because there are some lessons from this woman, Mary Magdalene. This woman from the town of Magdala, ju just west of the Sea of Galilee. This woman came from who was possessed by seven demons. And then made pure. And so just consider two things as we close tonight. Look at what Christ is able to do for a person. Look at what Christ is able to do for anyone. This woman is demon-possessed, and she becomes a divine partaker. Jesus saves her, and He uses her for His glory. Jesus cleanses from vile sin by His almighty power, and He makes... Any who will, a brand new creature in the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and then works in their lives and makes them a thankful, grateful, faithful follower. And that leads us to just one more takeaway. Look what someone can do for Christ. Look what Christ did for someone. Look what someone can do for Christ. After Mary was saved and healed, she practiced her newfound faith. She followed Jesus. And she got to meet His earthly needs throughout His spiritual ministry of sharing the gospel as He went on His journey. And she witnessed His death burial and, praise the Lord, 
His resurrection. Jesus was raised from the grave. And she was the first one to commune with Him. This demon-possessed woman ended up being a woman of God full of gratitude and love and faithfulness in her devoted life to Christ. And so many listen online. We have a good number in the service tonight. And the question can simply be asked, have you truly been cleansed? Have you been cleansed of your sins? Have you been made a new creature? Anyone can. It wasn't hard for Jesus to save this woman possessed of seven demons. It wasn't hard at all. And He can cleanse you tonight. We pray that if you're not, that you would believe on the one who who died for you, was buried, and who was resurrected from the grave. We're going to share that as we do every Sunday, but in a very special way this Sunday. Jesus' resurrection is the only hope for anyone. God raising Jesus from the grave says, says, your sacrifice is acceptable to save anyone from their sins. And if, if that's you tonight, I pray that you would call upon Him and I pray that we all might, might consider Mary Magdalene, someone I've, I've never heard spoken about much or expounded upon, but how faithful she was. And God bless you all tonight. That is it for this evening. Awana will be in uh, right at 8 o'clock. They'll be in before 8 o'clock if we get out of here before that. And I'm going to ask Brock Bullard if he would close our Bible study in a word of prayer. Love you all and God bless you.